problem with rare earths isn't what's in the ground, it's having the processing capability on the surface to extract them. It tends to be very expensive, there's a lot of environmental burden for extracting those materials, and certain regions of the world have invested very heavily in that technology. The critical materials are very important um, as we move from a fossil-faced society to an electrically driven society. So for example, if you look at an electric car, it has many critical materials within the battery and within the magnetic materials in the motor. Uh, if you look going to energy generation, offshore wind turbines can contain up to five tonnes of rare earth magnets, for example. So that shift from our fossil faced society into an electrically driven society is completely dependent upon those critical materials. There are lots of challenges for the UK around critical materials. A lot of the global supply of those materials um, are sourced from outside of Europe and outside the UK. And there are certain countries around the, the globe that have actually taken a very long term strategic position and have been buying up that mineral resource and also putting in the processing capability to be able to separate those materials. And the impact of that is you then have access to all the downstream market because you control the supply of those materials going into, into those applications. So the critical materials are often very finely distributed within an application. So for example, if you take cobalt, it's very finely distributed on the cathodes within layers of a lithium ion battery. And to get access to that material is, is quite tricky very finely distributed in the application. For things like rare earths, they're embedded in magnets which are inside a motor and there's a lot of manual labour to extract the motor and then to separate the magnet from the waste stream. So we really need new technologies to sense where these materials are in waste and to have automation and robotics to liberate those components from the applications and new processes to separate them very efficiently. Um, to give you a supply which you can reprocess back into new materials. Here at the University of Birmingham we have uh, key technologies for sensing and autonomously uh, robotically sorting waste. So we have projects in battery technology, we have projects in motor technology where, where some of the groups are looking at automatically sensing where these materials are in waste streams and then segregating them into components. We have then key technologies for separating those materials from those components. So for example, a hydrogen process has been developed right up to pilot scale for separating rare earth magnets from waste as a very clean fraction which we can reprocess. And then moving up into policy, we also have a policy commission starting with Sir John Beddington running it, which involves the entire supply chain from products all the way through to end of life. And we're looking at trying to develop an element strategy around critical materials for the UK. Emma Kendrick's group and the Faraday project led by Paul Anderson are looking at the, the, the whole battery pack in an electric car, so the lithium-ion battery pack, looking at how you identify the materials, how you segregate them, how you can extract them in pure form, and then you'll be able to remanufacture them directly back into lithium-ion batteries. I believe the main barrier to replacing critical element strategic materials in current lithium-ion is actually the success that we've had with our current lithium-ion technology. It is actually really good at what it does. In order for us to replace those materials, active materials as we would call them, cathode or anode materials, we have to develop materials that are better or surpass what we currently have. That is a big challenge. If we look at healthcare or wearable electronics, for example, Internet of Things, all of these need batteries. These could be low cost, safe. We don't need to be therefore reliant on such technologies such as lithium ion. One of my research areas, for example, is sodium ion batteries. Sodium is a much heavier atom compared to lithium, and as a result, the energy densities are typically lower than you would expect from a lithium ion battery. However, you have alternative benefits such as low cost, um, cheaper materials and more sustainable materials. So where we're not ever going to substitute a high energy battery pack such as the Tesla with the sodium ion, we can start looking at alternatives for wearable electronics and healthcare technologies. Where I see some of the advancements in lithium ion battery research is in the recyclability or reuse of some of those components. Currently, we actually import a lot of our materials for manufacturing of batteries from overseas, uh, Japan, Asia, US. If we start to look at those materials, that recycled materials as a resource, we can actually start to reutilize them in remanufacturing of batteries and bring those costs down.